Another fallacy of distraction or irrelevance is the appeal to force, the Latin for which is argumentum ad baculum. It uses a threat, mostly explicit, in an attempt to get us to accept a conclusion. As such, it is superficially linked to the appeal to fear, but its distinctive mark is the physical, emotional, or even economic intimidation that the arguer implies. Here's a video that explains the ad baculum. Ad baculum is a Latin phrase meaning literally to the stick. It refers to a logical fallacy, or in other words, a bad argument. In essence, ad baculum is using fear and intimidation to force your opponent to concede an argument, or at least to stop making that argument. There are many forms of this, three of which will be covered in this video. The first and most obvious form is using physical threats to force your opponent to acquiesce to an argument. For example, John argues that language is relative so long as people know what you're talking about. It doesn't matter if you pronounce gif with a hard or soft G. Tim responds, If you call it a gif, I'm going to punch you in the face. Tim didn't really respond to the argument. He just threatened physical harm to John if he didn't concede to his position. Another common form of ad baculum is using the force of one's authority or position to force an opponent to concede. John argues that using tabs during coding reduces file sizes and takes less energy to type. Therefore, we should institute that as a company policy. Steve, John's boss, responds, if you use tabs while coding at this company, you will need to find another company to work for. Steve didn't really respond to John's argument. He merely threatened John's financial well-being as an attempt to force him to concede the argument. A third, and perhaps the most common form of ad baculum, is to use social consequences as a means of getting an opponent to concede an argument. For example, John argues that his opposition to certain laws are founded on the concept of individual rights balanced against the common good. Tim doesn't like the policies that John argues for, and instead states that, Anyone who believes something so stupid is a wimpy bigot, and I'll do everything I can to let everyone know that. Tim didn't really address the argument John was making. He merely tried to induce shame in his opponent and the threat of social alienation as a means of getting him to give it up. There are many subtle forms of ad baculum. However, what unites them all is trying to use fear and intimidation rather than reason to win an argument. So just remember, threats are not an argument. Anytime someone starts waving a gun around, you can be sure that a threat is imminent. In this political ad, watch how the candidate concludes his pitch. The rifle is the clincher. If you mess with Dale Peterson, you'll face some unpleasant consequences. I'm Dale Peterson, and I'm after the Republican nomination for Alabama Agriculture Commissioner. I've been a farmer, a businessman, a cop, a Marine during Vietnam. So listen up. Alabama Ag Commissioner is one of the most powerful positions in Alabama, responsible for $5 billion. Bet you didn't know that. You know why? Thugs and criminals. If they can keep you in the dark, they can do whatever they want with all that money. And they don't give a rip about Alabama. Here we are, losing three family farms a day. Illegals bust in by the thousands, and Alabama's unemployment's at an all-time high. And what are my opponents doing about it? Stealing yard signs in the dark of night from my supporters. They're Republicans. We should be better than that. I'm Dale Peterson. I'll name names and take no prisoners. Give me the Republican nomination for Ag Commission, and let's show Alabama we mean business. The straw man fallacy distorts an opposing argument in order to make it more vulnerable and then attacks the invented vulnerabilities. By using a straw man, the attacker seems to be exposing the weaknesses in an opponent's position, but the attacker is actually putting down his own straw man, not the opponent. And that's what makes it effective. Here's a video that playfully demonstrates how the straw man operates. The straw man fallacy. Contrary to what many people would have us believe, a straw man is not simply an argument that you dislike or find inconvenient. Rather, it is a version of an argument that is misrepresented, simplified, so that it is easier to knock over. Just as an actual man made of straw is a less solid version of a man made of flesh, a straw man argument is a less solid version of a fully fleshed out argument. A straw man replaces or represents whatever actual argument is being made. Straw manning can come in many different forms. It's not even always in intentional. You might accidentally construct a straw man if you don't fully understand the depth of an argument. And that is fine. It happens to the best of us. However, to intentionally misread or misrepresent an argument to simplify the process of discrediting it, that's a little bit less forgivable. To take nuanced points out of context, to ignore crucial information, to even exaggerate claims to the point of absurdity, which is then easier to refute, these are all straw man tactics. For example, Mike
Mike and Straw Mike are having a conversation about how to responsibly depict awful stuff in media. I don't think it's too much to ask that when a media creator wants to show heinous or awful stuff, they do so in a context that shows that that stuff is heinous and awful. Oh, so now we're not allowed to show violent or terrible things unless we include some long-winded sermon about how bad things are bad? I think creators should be able to show or do whatever they want. The original argument states a preference for what Mike thinks constitutes the responsible use of media. The straw man argument recasts this as something much simpler and easier to agree with. Freedom is good, censorship is bad. But now Mike and Straw Mike are no longer arguing about the same point, and so the conversation will quickly become unfocused and aggressive, which is never fun. If you're gonna win an argument, you want to win against what the other side actually thinks, don't you? A straw man argument keeps that from happening. And here's a clip that investigates the straw man in more detail. The straw man or straw person fallacy occurs when an opponent's position is misrepresented in order to make it easier to critique. Just like how a man made of straw is intended to resemble an actual man, a straw man fallacy occurs when an opponent's position is presented in a way that resembles the original claim but is not the actual claim advanced. It creates the illusion that a position has been refuted or critiqued by switching out the original position with a different one. To see this more clearly, consider the following two claims. Advertisements for beer should be banned from TV. This is Maureen's original claim. People should stop drinking beer. This is my portrayal of Maureen's original claim. And these are two very different claims. Maureen only endorses the first one based on her conversation. However, my objection is to the second claim, which is much easier to refute. This is because the second claim is a very extreme view. It would take a lot of good arguments to convince others that people should stop drinking beer. But in our argument, I have improperly attributed this extreme view to Maureen, and then proceeded to attack it. Since this claim is much easier to refute than her original claim, I have committed the straw man fallacy. The general structure of straw man fallacies goes like this. First, person 1 advances position X. Second, person 2 presents a distorted version of position X. Let's call this position Y. Third, person 2 attacks position Y. And fourth, person 2 concludes that position X is false. In the straw man fallacy we've just considered, the original view was exaggerated to a very extreme view and then attacked. 